Hello, everyone, and welcome to this podcast. I'm absolutely delighted to have this opportunity to speak with Vineet Nayar. Vineet is no stranger to business continuity. He was the CEO of a company that today has a market cap of around $37 billion. That makes it pretty huge. He transformed the company and what he did is the subject of a Harvard case study. Innovative, exciting. Business continuity is about focusing on the important things that really matter. Planning for the future, being ready, not being taken by surprise, and having strong backup plans, which are sure will work. The key intention of this podcast with Vineet is about how he kept business continuity running during the pandemic in his NGO. And that's an absolutely fascinating story. During the pandemic, in the midst of uncertainty, disease, and possible death, the volunteers in his NGO came together as a team and saw the pandemic not as a constraint, but as an opportunity decided certain actions. And as Vineet said, it actually gave them an opportunity to even engage the parents of those children who otherwise in the pre-pandemic days were mostly busy with their daily life and were often not there. During the pandemic, they could actually see the fun their kids were having and the progress, feel excited about what this NGO was able to do for them in terms of giving them the interest, the education, and hopefully eventually transforming their life. Without further ado, let me give you Vineet Nayar. Vineet, thank you so much for being here today. Before we come to the NGO, which is what this talk is all about, I'll start first very briefly with your corporate experience. What you did in HCL Technologies was absolutely path-breaking. How did you make that happen? How do you relate it to business continuity? And what lessons can the rest of us take from that? So, uh, dearest, thanks, thanks, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think one of the fundamental mistakes we make while talking about business continuity is the assumption we make that God defines and humans follow. So, let me elaborate that in a uh, through a story that there was a very rich man. He had a very beautiful house, and he called a plumber. And John the plumber reached his house and this rich man started explaining to John the plumber the beautiful decor he had and a Michelangelo painting and how Mahatma Gandhi had come and sat on this chair and Nelson Mandela on that chair. And so he explained each and every nook and corner of the house. And uh, after one hour of this passionate uh, story, uh, he looked at John and saying, John, what do you think? And John said, all that is fine, but where the hell is the leak? (laughs) Uh, So I think in our uh, pursuit of getting very excited about our processes, our systems, our definitions, we forget that on the other side of execution are human beings. And if we look at the same problem from a human being context, the human being context looks a little different. We were managing National Stock Exchange and uh, and we were managing it remotely. And what used to happen is there were about 100 people in a room watching screens. And for days and days, fortunately, nothing would happen. And to keep them motivated when nothing is happening is very, very difficult. And, you know, from a business continuity point of view, you know, it was very important that they follow a system, they follow a process and they log in the trouble ticket when it comes and they do all that stuff. So massive training. But we started having significant attrition into that team predominantly because there was, you know, there was nothing which was happening. Unfortunately, there was nothing which is happening because the best business continuity is when you don't call upon something to happen. So we, we tried to find out exactly what is happening and we found out that there is no sense of purpose for these people in terms of what exactly are we doing. So once we, once we put a ticker up there and saying this is the amount which has been traded, a trillion dollar traded or one trillion dollar, one billion dollar traded in one hour, they suddenly saw a purpose. The fact that since nothing has happened, they have been successfully been able to trade a trillion dollars in a week or a billion dollars in a day, and that sense of purpose completely stopped the attrition level. I think it is very important for us to understand that business continuity or pursuit of following processes is largely driven out of a personal desire to do it, 
a purpose which meets the objective of your own, an aspiration to get it right, and an ambition that doing this is the right thing what I want to do at this stage. Now, this would not happen if you follow the traditional management style, which was largely in industrial age, which was you know, very instructional, very managerial, very control oriented, very process definition. In the digital age, it is very important to understand that no employee works unless the purpose is very clear. And therefore, the whole employee first, customer second idea at HCL came out of three questions in terms of what is the core purpose of HCL's existence? And we manage some very critical infrastructure for critical banks and critical energy systems and critical organizations and nothing can go wrong. But the core purpose was for us to create a unique differentiation for our customers or a unique experience for our customers. Second is who is creating that unique difference? The employees. And third, what should the role of managers in management be? It can be nothing but enthusing, encouraging, and enabling the employees to create the unique differentiation. Now, once you understand that in the digital age, that the industrial age management practices are not relevant, and you have to start with infusing, encouraging, enabling the employees and defining purpose for these employees, and that alignment has to be achieved with the objective before you go through systems and processes and an instruction manual is how employee first, customer second is born. And if you miss that part, and straight go to, I told you so, and this is the 10 steps, and this is the 11th step, today's generation will not follow. Mm -hmm. And therefore you would have massive mishaps, uh, predominantly because they do not align with the purpose of the organization, the purpose of the team, and the purpose of the task given ahead of them. And inverting that organization pyramid at HCL, and Japanese had done it with Kaizen methodology, just in time manufacturing, the uh, auto industry transformation, so therefore, when you look at business continuity, unless you understand and have a very clear cut strategy of how you're going to inspire human beings in doing what is necessary to be done and doing in the speed it needs to be done, unless they are energized and inspired, you would definitely not succeed. Brilliant. Thank you, Vineet. You put it so well. And uh, moving to the next part, which is Sampark, you obviously manage the same approach very well. And that's fascinating the way you explained it the last time we met, how Sampark kept going through the lockdown and did almost use that as an opportunity. Fascinating. So maybe just a bit about that. It's over to you. So therefore, for, for the people who do not know Sampark, in 2012-13, in I quit as Vice Chairman of HCL and CEO of HCL to uh, start a foundation with my wife. Uh, today, we work with about uh, one lakh school, common schools in the poorest part of India. And we have one crore children in our program. And we leverage design thinking and we leverage innovation to try and ignite the classroom transaction and inspire the teachers through a teacher first program uh, to be able to deliver a 40 to 50% increase in learning outcome in government schools. And we recently have signed up with Niti Ayog to add 1,19,000 more schools. So we should be, by the end of this year, uh, touching the lives of our two crore children. When COVID came in, uh, as, uh, as rightly some of you observed, you know, most of the people ran home. And the only uh, difference for them uh, from a strategy point of view was work from home. And work from home was this large business continuity strategy, which everybody... Uh, talked about and said that because of that and because of the security systems we have set and we were able to maintain productivity. But design thinking teaches you that, you know, whenever there is a bend in the marketplace or whenever there is an adversity in the environment, uh, you are rowing the boat in a certain speed with significant amount of coordination and you say left, everybody rows left, you say right, everybody rows right. And when the water turns chirp, ch uh, choppy, you need to get into river rafting. And therefore, river rafting is an opportunity. And it means you need to depart from what you were doing, growing in the past, and do something completely different. So we said, OK, while COVID is a big threat, schools are closed, uh, children are at home, what potentially can we do which could radically transform and convert this into an opportunity? Now, we don't have time to do all that, but first important thing for all of you to 
to notice is that whenever there is an adversity in the environment, you have to seek opportunity in that environment. To give you a couple of examples, one of the things is that we figured out that one of the challenges we face in education system is lack of involvement of parents. And parents are not involved in the children's education, they're not interested, and 99% of the children go to school for midday meal. Now that the children are at home, can we take the school to the parents despite you know, whatever adversity it is? So one of the initiatives which came out of this is that you know, we said, okay, are there loudspeakers in villages? Now there is a mosque or, or or a church in every village. And uh, we said, okay, can we use that loudspeaker to play audio programs? And our entire program, uh, Sampak Smart Shala is on audio predominantly. There's no electricity in most of these villages. So we said, okay, can Sampak Didi, which is a Sutradhar, start singing rhymes and telling stories and doing all that through the audio uh, of the loudspeaker in that religious center or a community center. Now, the advantage of that is number one, uh, the children will feel engaged. Uh, the second advantage is the parents will start getting educated. That there's something like this happening. So we started experimenting and lo and behold, I, I wish I could share those photographs. Children started wearing school clothes and sitting outside their house to listen to the loudspeakers with their books. Now, did the learning happen? No, you know, learning I'm sure would not have happened to the extent we want, but suddenly we saw mothers sitting with the children, listening to that and telling them what to do. So we suddenly had a community involvement and suddenly the panchayat got interested in what exactly is happening. They started asking the teachers, the teachers started coming to the community center, started teaching children through the loudspeaker of that community. And there was a mega transformation on the kind of interest in education and suddenly instead of playing music or religious thing, they were playing uh, stories and they were playing rhyme and there was a dramatic change. So things like this, there are many initiatives which we took in Sampak Foundation, which did not reduce the learning gap, but which suddenly galvanized the parent community and the Panchayati Raj community to be able to say, hey, education is important, children are important. And Every single person was seeing these children step out of the house, in front of the house sitting, and the mother sitting with the children, and that was a transformative experience. And imagine that happening in 10, 20 lakh households. Uh, it was a mega experience. So we, we launched about seven such initiatives to try and not focus on trying to teach children, but to try and see if we can use the COVID example to transform the transform the mindset of the people who are supporting the children. Vineet, this is simply amazing. Just listening to you is bringing tears to my eyes. Uh, having done it and achieved it would have meant so much more. Uh, and importantly, from your book, the title, The Employees, I guess the other question is, you couldn't do this alone. It was everyone together. And I guess uh, if you can just spend a few minutes on again, how you got the troops at that level, at the ground level, again, to kind of follow this whole vision and do it with the heart, because that's obviously what it took to make it happen. <laughs> One of the things which in support we call our employees sparks. And the reason we call them sparks is because they are, uh, they, they need to focus on sparking a change. Uh, one of the issues which we drive very hard in within Sampark is a two by two, which is effort to impact ratio. How much effort do you make and what is the kind of impact you create? So instead of uh, telling them these are the 10 things to do, we say uh, every time you make an effort, you see how much impact you're creating. So when this two by two, when the COVID came in and these kids, uh, and they are all from, you know, uh, government schools and poor rural communities, uh, they were struggling. So the first thing we said is that we will not allow any employee to go unemployed. So 100% guarantee for all employees, irrespective of the fact the schools are closed, irrespective of, of the fact that you have actually nothing to do predominantly because schools are closed. Now that put security in their head. And I said very clearly that irrespective of how long the COVID lasts, five years, 10 years, it doesn't matter. You have a secure job and your salary is intact. Now, once that happened, then I put the second request. Now that I have done this, 
can you come back to me with alternatives of how we will create a larger impact than we have created with the limitation of the kind of efforts you can make. You can't go to school, blah, blah, blah. Now, these seven initiatives, so they were about 40, 41 ideas. These seven were culled out of those 41 ideas. And all seven which were implemented were implemented because one or two of the sparks came up with those ideas. And that is the success of Sunpark Foundation, that we have not only inverted the organization pyramid internally, but we participated by teachers first and got teachers involved and, and crowdsourced all these innovative ideas and then implemented it. And then these three lakh teachers joined. You know, it is very important that you understand that three lakh teachers who joined this program and therefore, we could achieve the continuity in the child's mind uh, of uh, the fact that learning is important and transform the parent's mind. Thanks, Vineet. It was fascinating when you told me that story. I'm hearing it now again. It's equally fascinating, probably even more. Lots of good learnings, lots of lessons. And to me, the big takeaway is if you're doing a good thing, don't give up. Keep going. Keep the faith. So that's a lesson for everyone else. Do good things. Circumstances will support you and help you keep going. Good things will eventually survive. That's my motto. Uh, that's what my heart says. And I hope I'm go never going to be proved wrong on that. Thanks so much, Vineet, once again, for that absolutely inspirational talk. Take care. You have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. God bless. Take care.